In mathematics, more specifically in general topology and related branches, a net or more smith sequence is a generalization of the notion of a sequence. In essence, a sequence is a function with domain the natural numbers, and in the context of topology, the codomain of this function is usually any topological space. However, in the context of topology, sequences do not fully encode all information about a function between topological spaces. In particular, the following two conditions are not equivalent in general for a map f between topological spaces x and y. The map f is continuous, given any point x in x, and any sequence in x converging to x. The composition of f with this sequence converges to f. It is true, however, that condition 1 implies condition 2. The difficulty encountered when attempting to prove that condition 2 implies condition 1 lies in the fact that topological spaces are, in general, not first countable. If the first countability axiom were imposed on the topological spaces in question, the two above conditions would be equivalent. In particular, the two conditions are equivalent for metric spaces. The purpose of the concept of a net, first introduced by E. H. Moore and H. L. Smith in 1922, is to generalize the notion of a sequence so as to confirm the equivalence of the conditions. In particular, rather than being defined on a countable linearly ordered set, a net is defined on an arbitrary directed set. In particular, this allows theorems similar to that asserting the equivalence of condition 1 and condition 2 to hold in the context of topological spaces that do not necessarily have a countable or linearly ordered neighborhood basis around a point. Therefore, while sequences do not encode sufficient information about functions between topological spaces, Nets do because collections of open sets in topological spaces are much like directed sets in behavior. The term net was coined by Kelly. Nets are one of the many tools used in topology to generalize certain concepts that may only be general enough in the context of metric spaces. A related notion, that of the filter, was developed in 1937 by Henry Carton. Definition if x is a topological space, a net in x is a function from some directed set a to x. If a is a directed set, we often write a net from a to x in the form, which expresses the fact that the element α in a is mapped to the element x α in x. Examples of nets Every non-empty totally ordered set is directed. Therefore, every function on such a set is a net. In particular, the natural numbers with the usual order form such a set, and a sequence is a function on the natural numbers. So every sequence is a net. Another important example is as follows. Given a point x in a topological space, let nx denote the set of all neighborhoods containing x. Then nx is a directed set, where the direction is given by reverse inclusion, so that st if and only if s is contained in t. For s in nx, let xs be a point in s, then is a net. As s increases with respect to, the points xs in the net are constrained to lie in decreasing neighborhoods of x, so intuitively speaking, we are led to the idea that xs must tend towards x in some sense. We can make this limiting concept precise. Limits of nets. If is a net from a directed set A into X, and if Y is a subset of X, then we say that is eventually in Y if there exists an alpha in A so that for every beta in A with beta alpha, the point X beta lies in Y. If is a net in the topological space X, and X is an element of X. We say that the net converges towards x or has limit x and write lim x alpha equals x if and only if for every neighborhood u of x is eventually in u. Intuitively, this means that the values x alpha come and stay as close as we want to x for large enough alpha. Note that the example net given above on the neighborhood system of a point x does indeed converge to x according to this definition. Given a base for the topology, in order to prove convergence of a net it is necessary and sufficient to prove that there exists some point x. 
such that is eventually in all members of the base containing this putative limit. Examples of limits of nets. Limit of a sequence and limit of a function. See below. Limits of nets of Riemann sums, in the definition of the Riemann integral. In this example, the directed set is the set of partitions of the interval of integration, partially ordered by inclusion. Supplementary definitions. Let phi be a net on x based on the directed set D and let a be a subset of x. Then phi is said to be frequently in A if for every alpha in D there exists some beta alpha, beta in D, so that phi is in A. A point x in x is said to be an accumulation point or cluster point of a net if for every neighborhood U of x, the net is frequently in U. A net phi on set x is called universal, or an ultranet if for every subset A of x, either phi is eventually in A or phi is eventually in x minus A. Example Examples. Sequence in a topological space. A sequence in a topological space V can be considered a net in V defined on N. The net is eventually in a subset Y of V if there exists an N in N such that for every N N, the point in is in Y. We have Limman equals L if and only if for every neighborhood Y of L, the net is eventually in Y. The net is frequently in a subset Y of E if and only if for every N in N there exists some N N such that N is in Y, that is, if and only if infinitely many elements of the sequence are in Y. Thus a point Y in V is a cluster point of the net if and only if every neighborhood Y of Y contains infinitely many elements of the sequence. Function from a metric space to a topological space. Consider a function from a metric space M to a topological space V, and a point C of M. We direct the set M, C, reversely according to distance from C, that is, the relation is, has at least the same distance to C as, so that, large enough, with respect to the relation means, close enough to C. The function F is a net in V defined on M, C. The net F is eventually in a subset Y of E if there exists an R in M, C, such that for every X in M, C, with D, D, the point F is in Y. We have L I M X C F equals L if and only if for every neighborhood Y of L, F is eventually in Y. The net F is frequently in a subset Y of E if and only if for every A in M, C, there exists some X in M, C, with D, D such that F is in Y. A point Y and V V is a cluster point of the net F if and only if for every neighborhood Y of Y, the net is frequently in Y. Function from a well-ordered set to a topological space. Consider a well-ordered set, 0, C, with limit point C, and a function F from, 0, C, to a topological space V. This function is a net on, 0, C. It is eventually in a subset Y of E if there exists an in, 0, C, such that for every X A, the point F is in Y. We have L I M X C F equals L if and only if for every neighborhood Y of L, F is eventually in Y. The net F is frequently in a subset Y of E if and only if for every A in, 0, C, there exists some X in, A, C, such that that F is in Y. A point Y and V is a cluster point of the net F if and only if for every neighborhood Y of Y, the net is frequently in Y. The first example is a special case of this with C equals omega. See also ordinal index sequence. Properties. Virtually all concepts of topology can be rephrased in the language of nets and limits. This may be useful to guide the intuition since the notion of limit of a net is very similar to that of limit of a sequence. The following set of theorems and lemmas help cement that similarity. A function f x y between topological spaces is continuous at the point x if and only if for every net with lim x alpha equals x we have lim f equals f. Note that this theorem is in general not true if we replace net by sequence. We have to allow for more directed sets than just the natural numbers if x is not first countable. In general, a net in a space x can have more than one limit, but if x is a Hausdorff space, the limit of a net, if it exists, is unique. Conversely, if x is not Hausdorff, then there exists a net on x with two distinct limits. 
Thus the uniqueness of the limit is equivalent to the Hausdorff condition on the space, and indeed this may be taken as the definition. Note that this result depends on the directedness condition. A set indexed by a general preorder or partial order may have distinct limit points even in a Hausdorff space. If U is a subset of X, then X is in the closure of U if and only if there exists a net with limit X and such that X alpha is in U for all alpha. A subset A of X is closed if and only if, whenever is a net with elements in A and limit X, then X is in A. The set of cluster points of a net is equal to the set of limits of its convergent subnets. A net has a limit if and only if all of its subnets have limits. In that case, every limit of the net is also a limit of every subnet. A space X is compact if and only if every net in X has a subnet with a limit in X. This can be seen as a generalization of the bowles arno weierstrass theorem and heine borel theorem. A net in the product space has a limit if and only if each projection has a limit. Symbolically, if is a net in the product x equals pi i x i, then it converges to x if and only if for each i. Armed with this observation and the above characterization of compactness in terms on nets, one can give a slick proof of Tikhonov's theorem. If f, x, y and is an ultranet on x, then is an ultranet on y. Cauchy nets in a metric space or uniform space, one can speak of Cauchy nets in much the same way as Cauchy sequences. The concept even generalizes to Cauchy spaces. Relation to filters A filter is another idea in topology that allows for a general definition for convergence in general topological spaces. The two ideas are equivalent in the sense that they give the same concept of convergence. More specifically, for every filter base an associated net can be constructed, and convergence of the filter base implies convergence of the associated net, and the other way around. For instance, any net in induces a filter base of tails where the filter in generated by this filter base is called the net's eventuality filter. This correspondence allows for any theorem that can be proven with one concept to be proven with the other. For instance, Contiguity of a function from one topological space to the other can be characterized either by the convergence of a net in the domain implying the convergence of the corresponding net in the codomain, or by the same statement with filter bases. Robert G. Bartle argues that despite their equivalence, it is useful to have both concepts. He argues that nets are enough like sequences to make natural proofs and definitions in analogy to sequences, especially ones using sequential elements, such as is common in analysis, while filters are most useful in algebraic topology. In any case, he shows how the two can be used in combination to prove various theorems in general topology. Limit superior. Limit superior and limit inferior of a net of real numbers can be defined in a similar manner as for sequences. Some authors work even with more general structures than the real line, like complete lattices. For a net we put limit superior of a net of real numbers has many properties analogous to the case of sequences, e.g., where equality holds whenever one of the nets is convergent.